Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe and smash that like button. Today we are going to talk about the bisexual prophet of Islam. Yes, you heard it correctly. We are going to talk about the bisexual prophet Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. Not many Muslims know that Muhammad had actually a lot of sexual activities not only with women but also with men. I kid you not. We have proof to that and today we're going to expose the bisexual prophet of Islam. Muslims always say Islam says that it is haram to have sex with men. You cannot be a homosexual in Islam. But today we're going to show you that Muhammad actually had sexual encounters with men besides women. And there are a lot of proof and evidence from the Islamic sources that we will go to. So if you don't like this topic please don't watch further because this is going to be a explicit topic so if there are women or children don't watch this video let us start guys if we go to the Quran in chapter 93 ayah 6 it says Allah speaking did he not find you an orphan and give you refuge now what does this ayah mean guys we have to go to the tafsir to understand what this ayah is talking about let us go to the tafsir of al-razi to understand what this ayah actually means as you see here we can see that uh, basically the prophet of islam is uh, having a nice time with another man this is of course a meme so some Muslims will find this very disturbing so let us read what this information is telling us we know that Muhammad had a lot of wives and women but did he ever had men that's the question of today did he ever have men before going further, let's see the harsh experiences he had while he was still an orphan kid. Because remember, if we go to the uh, Sira Nabawiya by Ibn Hisham, we can understand that Amina died when Muhammad was really young. And Muhammad became an orphan because his dad was already dead and according to the Islamic sources Muhammad stayed in the belly of his mother for four years that doesn't make sense but I don't want to go too much off topic today the topic of today as I said we're going to prove to you that Muhammad had encounters with men and here's the proof I made him take off his clothes and sleep with me. Now who said that? Let us see who said that. And as I mentioned the ayah in regards to Surah Ad duha chapter 93, ayah 6. Imam Fakhreddin al-Razi in his tafsir says, After the death of Abdullah bin Abdul al-Muttalib, the Prophet's father, while the mother of the Prophet is still pregnant with him, and then he was born, he was with his grandfather Abdul Muttalib and his mother Amina. Amina died while he was two years old and the grandfather also died while he was eight years. And before his death, Abdul Muttalib asked Abba Talib to take care of the Prophet since he was Abdullah brother from the same mother. So. Abu Talib took custody of the Prophet of Allah after his grandfather passed away until he was commissioned with prophecy so until Muhammad became a so-called Prophet it has been told that Abu Talib one day said to his brother Al-Abbas 
Abu Talib speaking. Do want to hear? Do you want to hear about Muhammad and what I saw from him? So he's asking Al Abbas. Did you hear what I saw from him from the Prophet? Al Abbas said, "Yes, I want." Abu Talib said, "He was in my custody and not leaving him out of my sight, day and night, and do not entrust him to anyone until I make him sleep in my bed." So <laughs> Abu Talib is saying that Muhammad was sleeping in his bed. Can you? Did you catch it, guys? And Abu Talib says, "Here comes the most disturbing part." One night, I ordered him to take off his clothing. Who? Abu Talib ordered Muhammad to take off his clothing and sleep with me. Oh oh, oh oh. So I saw re resentment on his face, and but hate to show disobedience. So Muhammad did, didn't want to become disobedient, so he did it, and he replied back. Oh uncle, put your face away until I take off my clothing, as no one should see my naked body. <laughs> so Muhammad didn't want to sh uh, see or show, in this case, his naked body to Abu Talib, right? And imagine he was sleeping in the same bed with Abu Talib. So I was puzzled. Abu Talib was puzzled from his response. And I did put my face away until he came into bed. And when he did, there was a dress between both of us that I did not did not put. And then I found that he is too soft and smells so good as if he is soaked in scents. So I kept trying hard to stare at his body. So Abu Talib kept looking at the body of Muhammad. And a lot of times during our sleep at this night, I found him not in bed. And, kept, and I kept calling on him, so he said, Uncle, here I am, and return. So Muhammad was sleeping with another man in the same bed. In this case, with Abu Talib. Are you seeing what's going on here, guys? Abu Talib did the following. One, he requested that Muhammad take off his clothes and come to bed. Two, he was trying too hard to stare at and ate year old naked boy and three he managed to touch him during his sleep and described his skin as being very soft <laughs> and four he was obviously enjoying the presence of a naked boy as he kept smelling staring and touching him the naked body the naked boy of Muhammad the naked boy at the year of eight and Abu Talib kept staring at him and you know <laughs> this is really a strange uh, you know situation here right it was really custom <laughs> that this gives a sufficient indication of that perverted Bedouin community right so let us continue and there is even much more disturbing facts. Muhammad was actually raped by his cousin. Yes, you heard it correctly. Muhammad said, my cousin raped me. Let me show you. Meanwhile, Muhammad, his own uncle Abu Talib, only touched him. We found that Muhammad claimed that he was raped by his own cousin, Abu Sufyan ibn Harith bin Abdul Muttalib. So his own cousin raped him. And before presenting the evidence, let us examine the Arabic expression used. Hadaka ardi min hataka al ard. Hataka ardi. Hataka ardi. Hataka ardi. Coming from hataka al ard. Let us see how it will be translated in a translation engine like Google Translate. What does this mean? If we, pa uh, if we post the Arabic two words, Hatak al ard, Hatak al ard, it means rape. Did you catch it, guys? This is Google Translate. Hatak al ard means rape. Yes, exactly. Thank you. It means rape. 
Did you catch it, guys? So Muhammad was actually raped. And let us go to the Islamic sources, not my sources, Muslims. It's your Islamic sources. This is from the Islamic source, al Sira al nabawiya in the Sira of Ibn Hisham about the life of Muhammad, the biography, early biography of Muhammad. al Sira Nabawiyyah, you can go and find it yourself. It is reported by Ibn Ishaq, and it was that Abu Sufyan, Ibn al-Harith bin Abdul Muttalib and Abdullah bin Ubay Ummiya bin al-Mughira had met the Prophet of Allah at a place called Naik al Uqab, mean between Mecca and Medina. So it's a place that is between Mecca and Medina. So they wanted to enter in his presence. So Um Salama talk to him about that saying, O Prophet of Allah, it is your cousin from your uncle and your other cousin from your aunt and your kinsman. So Muhammad answered, I have nothing to do with those two. So Muhammad said, I have nothing to do with my two cousins. In regards to my cousin, he raped me. So Muhammad is saying, Ibn Ammi Hataka Ardi. Ibn Ammi Hataka So that means my cousin he raped me. This is from the earliest source by Ibn Hisham, the student of Ibn Ishaq. And this is basically more early than the Quran itself, guys. This is the most earliest source about the life of Muhammad, right? This is not my source, guys. This is not the source of Rob Christian. This is the Sira and Nabawi. Lord of mercy. Muslims, you always say sex between a man and a man is kufr it's haram it's disgusting it's a big sin in islam but as you see muhammad was raped by his own cousin did you catch it uh oh what are you going to do with this muslims how many muslims actually know about this that the Prophet of Islam was raped by his own cousin. And this is also here the source in the Arabic. Imma ibn ammi fahataka ardi. So don't say this is a false translation. I know Arabic, and as you see. It actually does mean in, in regards to my cousin, he raped me. In right. regards to my cousin, the son of my uncle, my cousin, فَهَتَكَ ardi, He raped me. Right? He raped me. So here Muhammad is clearly saying that his cousin, the son of his uncle, he raped the Prophet of Islam. So this is why Muhammad did not want to see them. I have nothing to do with these two. Did you catch it, guys? Because when he was young, they, he raped, they raped him. Right? His uncle, son, raped the Prophet of Islam. So all arguments made by Muslim apologists against my cousin raped me failed. And the main two arguments are the hadith is false because no chain of narrators and no names of reporters. So Muslim apologists will say, no, no, you know, this is false. This, uh, this is uh, a weak hadith or the uh, hadith or fake hadith, right? Often they use this claim when they are cornered, when they are exposed and busted. And we are going to show you that the hadith is actually very strong. And to answer this, we find the following Arabic reference, meaning 
Al Haytami said, No, it has good isnad. So, good of chain of narrators. This is a very famous Arabic scholar saying that the isnad, that the chain of narrators is good chain. And Albani says the same. And Al Albani says the same. So, we have two very respected scholars in Islam who say that the isnad is good good chain of narrators and the second one when they say the expression hatak ardi not necessarily means raped me but it could also mean he scandalized me and hurt my reputation with false accusation so they try to tap dance around the problem and say no no uh, muhammad you know the prophet of islam didn't mean actually that he raped me basically it means that he uh, made my name black or basically uh, they, they were uh, saying bad stuff about me giving me a bad reputation but that's not the case and let us prove it to you guys and that it's linguistically true but as person in normal life situation this is impossible to be used for the secondary meaning and for that to happen it needs within the context of the seerah and the hadith it needs evidence the very basic log log uh, logic and reasoning implies that for some text to apply the secondary meaning other than the direct one that it needs a karina an evidence from the full context that supports the secondary meaning an example of evidence that if i read the full hadith it will not make sense unless the secondary meaning is applied and does not apply to hadith hand in hand for example the word tawaffa 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 basically dying usually 99 percent meaning died but rarely mean sleep if it is used in a sentence that has apparent evidence for that so if i said this person tawaffa so that means this person died tawaffa means he died, this person died, that it simply means this person died. But if I said this person, yeah, tawaffa bil at night, then it can mean this person goes into deep sleep at night. So, following are more three different and independent sources that mention the same. You can also go and see for yourself if you know Arabic. So let us continue. There are other sources that talk about the sex adventures with the Sahaba. Here is one Muhammad and Abu Bahisa. Bahisa. Sorry, Bahisa. In Al Sunnan Al Kubra, reported by Abu Ali Al Ruzbari from Abu Bakr bin Dasah. Tahanna Abu Dawood, Tahanna obeyed Allah bin Mu'az, Tahanna Abi, Tahanna Khamas from Siyar bin Nasur reported, a man from Bani Fazaza from a woman called Bahisa about her father said, My father Abu Bahisa took permission from the Prophet and he entered between him and his shirt and began to kiss him and embrace him. <laughs> Did you catch it guys? And who is that about the Prophet? And then said Abu Bahisa, O Prophet of Allah, what is the thing that is forbidden to be forbidden? Muhammad said the water and continue on. So as you see, Muhammad was kissed and embraced by another man. Another as you see another strange activity between the prophet of islam with another man in this case a sahaba or sahabi and someone is for sure weird happening in this last conversation the back and forth while abu bahisa is inside muhammad's shirt that's strange normal men don't do that right normal straight men don't do that so here as you see another bisexual activity if you know what I mean <laughs> here's also the reference in Arabic you can go and find it Muslims 
in the Arabic sources. Al-Tabarani, embarrassing details. Now in Al-Mu'aghram Al-Kabir of Tabarani, there are some more details that are embarrassing about what happened between Muhammad and Abu Bahisa. It says when Abu Bahisa entered inside Muhammad's shirt, he entered from the back. So <laughs> Abu Bahisa, Billy was on the most dignified prophet bag. So he was standing behind Muhammad and he was basically humping him, <laughs> so to speak. And it also says Abu Bahisa kept rubbing his chest on Muhammad back and then mentions the same forbidden water, salt, spice it up conversation. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And here's again the Arabic reference. You can go and find it for yourself. Also on this website, islamweb.net, a very known website. Muhammad and Osama bin Zaid in Sunan ibn Majah. Hadith number 1976, 1976. In Sunan ibn Majah, hadith number 1976, reported by Abu Bakr bin Abi Sahiba from Shuraik from Al Abbas bin Zuri from Al and 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 it's he, she said from Aisha she said Osama was trembled by the door step so he heard his for it so Rasulullah Muhammad said remove the blood away so he she held him and then Muhammad started to suck the blood away and spit it away from his face so Muhammad was sucking the blood of the man's face. If Osama, look what Muhammad is saying, if Osama was a maid, a female slave, then I would have adorned and dressed him until he became in my partnership. So Muhammad would have basically had sexual relationship with a man and Muhammad would have dressed him like a woman basically and would love him. And our prophet we are talking about today is having a fantasy about this gentleman called Osama. A fantasy, a sexual fantasy. Dressing up this man and having intimate, intimate relationship with him. So basically, he liked the guy. Huh? Strange, strange things happening with the prophet of Islam, as you see. And this is the website that you can go and read it from. Here's also the Arabic reference. Let me keep going. You know, a lot of strange things, as you see, between Muhammad and many men. And here's a third proof that Muhammad had sexual activities with men. A man named Zahir, who used to declare that the Prophet loves me. Wow. Okay, said that there, one day Muhammad crept and, and was behind him. So Muhammad came close to him, behind him, without him, him being aware, and put him in a bear hug. So Muhammad grabbed the guy from behind and hugged him from behind by <laughs> basically a bear hug. Zahir, alarmed, yelled, get off me. So the guy said, this Zahir guy said, get off me. He didn't know who it was. After turning his head, and discovering that it was Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, he stopped struggling and proceeded to push his back <laughs> into the prophet's chest. So the guy was basically, you know, pushing his backside into the ch chest of Muhammad. Praise and blessings upon him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, so the guy was rubbing his ass, basically, in the prophet's chest and Muhammad seems to like it. He, Muhammad didn't rebuke him saying, what are you doing man? Stop. So we find that in Musnad Ahmad, as Sunan al-Kubra, Mughammad al-Zawaid, wa Manba al-Fawaid, and Miskat al-Musahib, and following are the Arabic reference. Again, you can go and look it up yourself, Muslims, if you don't believe us. It's all over the internet. And as you see, the internet is really a big enemy of Islam, exposing the
pervert gay activities, homosexual activities of the Prophet of Islam. Hugging a man from behind and the guy liking it and basically, you know, humping, giving the, the Muslim Prophet, the Prophet of Islam, a nice lap dance, basically. Oh man, disgusting. Muhammad and Asaid bin Hudayr, he is another, a fourth shocking evidence about the life of Muhammad engaging in homosexual activities. This is from Sunan Abi Dawood. Sunan Abi Dawood. Hadith number 5224, reported by Amr all the way to Al-Ansar said that while he was talking with people and there was a banter between friends, the Prophet came and poked him in his side. So I say it said, wait. So the Prophet said, I will wait. I say it said, he have a shirt on you and I do not have one on me. So the Prophet lifted up his shirt. So Muhammad lifted up the shirt and he, a Sayyid, hugged him and kissed his torso. The part from his belly button to his armpits. And then a Sayyid said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I know you wanted that. Oh man. So, again, a sexual gay activity between the Prophet of Islam and another man kissing the belly of another man and you know yeah, yeah you're prophet of Allah I know you wanted that oh man and this is a great sahih in chain by Albani it's sahih hadith don't say it's a da'if hadith and here is the link all right so the prophet wanted someone who is same sex to kiss him on his torso well the prophet has perverted the size of his own then the same hadith is in al mustadrak al sahihain and the hadith grade is sahih al isnad it's a sahih chain it's a perfect hadith sahih sahih and here's the Arabic reference, as you see. And a fifth encounter, Muhammad with his wife and other Sahaba under one kill. In Al-Mustadrak Al-Sahihain, we find the following. From Abdullah bin Al-Zubayr, from his father said, Rasulullah Muhammad, Rasulullah sent me one cold day, on one cold day when I returned back, and he, with some of his women under his kilt, he made me enter the kilt and we became three. And this hadith is again a Sahih al Isnad. Great Sahih. Sahih. Strange things in the life of Muhammad with other men again. But in this case, with one of the wives of Muhammad also. So it's basically a threesome activity. And here's the Arabic reference. Naked people riding Rasulullah until the sunrise. In Musnad Ahmed, we find the following hadith reported by Aram and Affan all the way to Ibn Mas'ud who said, Rasulullah wanted me to join him. So we went on our way until we came a place called Kaza wa uh, sorry, Kaza wa Kaza, meaning he refused to mention the name of this place, like like this place and this place, you know. So he planned for what for that I should stay little behind him and keep that distance as if I did not, I will be killed, and that is exactly what I did. Then Rasulullah went ahead a small distance, and he Muhammad mentions there are a group of people, and then a fan confirmed the following description of those people. Inshallah, they are naked and I cannot see their genitals. What? Their private parts? Tall and thin. And then Abdullah said, they came and kept riding. Rasulullah. What? 
they came and kept writing Rasulullah, peace and blessing upon him, and Rasulullah kept reading over them. Then Abdullah continues to say, them also to come and rotate around me and stay my way. So I was so terrified from them, so that I sat down until the first light of sunrise when they left. Then Rasulullah came feeling heaviness and pain because of them being riding him. What? Lord have mercy. Now the hadith continues and you find Muhammad trying to get out of that by saying that those naked people are angels in white robes. But then why did Abdullah saw them? So why did another guy saw them naked? So it was not only Muhammad who saw them, right? So another guy saw them. So they were basically not angels. They were other males. And why he saw Muhammad reading Quran on them? And how come angels come as naked and write people? If you're going to say that those are angels. Naked angels? And write Muhammad? Naked angels writing Muhammad? As you see, this must be demons, right? This must be, as Muslims claim they are, jinns. Jinns writing the Prophet of Islam? As you see, Muhammad was actually getting basically raped by the demon that was choking him in that cave. Iqra. Iqra ya Muhammad. So the so-called angel, we know it was a demon, but the so-called angel was forcing Muhammad to do things that he did not like. So maybe he was raping him in that cave. Uh, Allahu alam. Allah knows best. Now again, the hadith grade is sahih al-isnad. No way out of this hadith, my dear Muslim friends. The same hadith was also mentioned in Al-Turmudi and other Islamic resources refer to the Arabic references. Here is the Arabic text as you see in front of you. And this is the reference and this is the link. You can go look it up yourself. Uh, modern Imams following Muhammad's footsteps. There are also a lot of gay marriages today in Islam. I kid you not. It must be shocking for a lot of Muslims, but this is true. This Imam in Paris is same sex married. He fully practice Islam. He pray and even do hug and opened a mosque for gay Muslims and he makes them marry the same sex. So there's a gay imam in Paris who has his own praying place who actually practicing Islam and he marriages as you see here men with one another. Gays, gay marriages and this is happening in a mosque, in a Muslim mosque, guys. Lord have mercy. And this is other Imams doing the same in New York. You see two women, lesbian women, gay women, getting married in front of this Imam, as you see in front of you. Beautiful, right? So Muslims, we have presented more than enough proof that Muhammad was actually raped by his cousin, by his own cousin, Ibn Ammi Hatakardi. And we showed you also the sexual activities of Muhammad with other men. So your prophet was nothing but a sexual pervert who had really a troubled youth, right? Childhood, basically, sorry. Childhood, a really troubled childhood. And you know, when you encounter such things and you did have sexual activities, in this case with your cousin and your uncle, Abu Talib, we know Muhammad used to sleep with his uncle in the same bed. 
So Allahu A'lam what his uncle did to him, you know, and his uncle Abu Talib was looking at his naked body and he really liked his body, his naked body of the Prophet of Islam. So Lord knows what happened in that bed and as we showed you Muhammad from his own mouth saying and I quote quoting the Prophet of Islam Ibn Ammi Hatakardi my cousin the son of my uncle raped me Muslims I hope you really enjoyed this video and as you saw we showed you from very authentic Islamic sources that Muhammad had sexual activities encounters with other men besides his many wives either you're going to accept these detailed facts about the life of your prophet or you simply can leave Islam and I want you to accept Jesus Christ, accept the truth and leave this satanic cult because Jesus is Lord and Muhammad is nothing but a gay, perverted, or in this case, basically a bisexual, fake prophet. A fake prophet, a prophet of Satan himself doing nasty stuff with other men. Thank you for watching. Please download this video and spread it around. You can also translate it in other languages. Thank you for watching and God bless.